right, welcome back to Mornings on Main Street. What's the band doing? They're on a coffee break? Come on, guys, From se- I just need you from 7 to 8. That's it. All right, welcome back to Mornings on Main Street. Let's bring in our good friend Terry McCormick from Titan Insider with more on the Tennessee Titans. Terry, good to see you, my man. Yeah, Joe, thanks. I get to follow the lady that was talking about poop, so we're going to talk about some more crap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, that was right near your wheelhouse, Terry. Congratulations. Uh, Terry, you have probably uh, 40 things you could write about in the next three days in the Tennessee Titans. Oh, my gosh. I mean, when you look at this team, you know, we thought this team was a shoe-in to get one of the top seeds, and now they've got the Indianapolis Colts charging right on their heels only one game back. And the Titans have a tough game with the San Francisco 49ers coming up Thursday. Now, they still hold the tie break on the Colts, but this offense right now is really struggling. And And I made the comparison on Twitter last night, you know, that, you know, not all of this is on Ryan Tannehill. Now, obviously, it's attached to him because he's the quarterback and he's the guy letting go of the football and all those things. But. If you watched the game last night between the Bucks and the Saints, you saw what happened to Tom Brady when he lost Mike Evans and Chris Godwin and Leonard Fournette. He didn't have Antonio Brown available. When your quarterback doesn't have weapons, unless he's Aaron Rodgers or Patrick Mahomes, chances are he's not going to play very well. That's a great point. You know, it's funny. Titans fans are they, this on Twitter are just sometimes it's insanity because uh, they were like, get rid of Tanny Hill. And just like you talked about, yeah, when Brady does it last night, he's a warrior. He's fighting through that. Well, Tanny Hill's lost probably twice as many people as Tom Brady has. And you're right, because he's a quarterback, he gets a lot of the blame in there. But, I mean, the guy stands in there and takes hits and doesn't complain and does his job. I got no problem with Ryan Tanny Hill. No, I mean, you wish that the numbers would look better. You wish that the turnovers would, uh, you know, be diminished. But uh, this is an offense that right now the turnovers – are really the only thing that's holding them back other than the fact that with the receiving core, you know, it's there's a lot of difference in throwing to A.J. Brown and with all due respect, throwing to Nick Westbrook, Aquina, Cody Hollister, and Chester Rogers because those guys just are not the dynamic players that A.J. Brown is. And then when you look at, you know, the, the other situation with Julio Jones, I mean, you know, he's gotten to be like an M.G. Midget, Joe. You remember those cars from back in the 60s and 70s? <laughs> how they looked great when they were on the road and people would always say, wow, that's an awesome looking car, but they spent more time in the shop than they did on the road. (laughs) Oh, that's the best analogy. Yeah. We got the website up now, titaninsider.com. No fluff, great articles, great stories. Uh, What's going on. Yeah. That's the thing about Julio Jones, you know, Titans fans are like, we got to get Jadavion Clowney. He was a disaster. We got to get Julio Jones. He is a disaster. Titans fans need to stay off the free agent market. Uh, and not try to figure out who they want to get because so far these guys have been a disaster. Yeah, I mean, you know, just unable to stay healthy. And, you know, now that's not to say that they haven't made some good moves. Zach Cunningham, they picked him up off waivers yesterday or last week. He started yesterday, played pretty well. Uh, This guy, Buster Screen, that they brought in off the street, has played really well at defensive back. Deontay Foreman's done a good job for them uh, coming in uh, after Derrick Henry was hurt. So, I mean, some of the lesser known guys that they've had to bring in this year have really played well, uh, you know, given the circumstances. And then some of the guys that they really counted on to be out there and give them something like a Julio Jones, like a Bud Dupree, those guys just haven't been able to stay healthy. Who takes the blame for yesterday's loss? I mean, what was the one thing that gave them this loss? Well, I think they lost the game in the first half, if you want my honest opinion, because They had the ball twice in the red zone, settled for chip shot field goals. That made it 13 to three. If you score a touchdown on either one of those, you're probably winning the ball game because the Steelers are not built to to come back and rally, in my opinion. But when you turn the ball over like they did in the second half, of course, you're giving them a short field. You're giving them opportunities. The defense played fantastic yesterday because every time the ball was turned over, they held Pittsburgh to a field goal pretty much in the second half. It was amazing. Uh, Even in the first half with the Ferkser fumble, uh, they held them to a a field goal there. So I think the offense has got to take care of the football and they've got to cash in when they get in the red zone. They can't settle for three points because that came back to bite them late in the game when they were turning the ball over and they were not able to survive it. Titans, you know, the game pretty healthy yesterday or do they have any more besides the normal, you know, bumps and nicks and everything else well obviously julio is a question mark 
and uh, that's the big one. So I think the the thing that people should be watching for this week is A.J. Brown coming back. I would expect that he would be close to maybe being able to play against the 49ers, and they need him badly. Uh, he's been out on the practice field, you know, before practice and, you know, working out, running. You've been seeing him catch some passes from coaches and whatnot, uh, a little bit of that. And he's a guy that they really need to get back because this offense doesn't function right without him. You look, the next two games, you got the 49ers who are a really good football team and play really good on the road. And then you have to take on the hottest team. And then I never thought I'd say this, the hottest team in the National Football League, the Miami Dolphins. So these are two crucial big games. Oh, absolutely they are. It's much like the Steelers game. It was kind of do or die for the Steelers. It's going to be do or die with the 49ers and do or die with the Dolphins because those teams are right there in the hunt uh, for wild card spots. And, and you know, they can't afford very many losses down the stretch. So the Titans are probably going to get the best shot from both of those teams. It's going to be interesting, Terry, because now they're 9-5, and five, lost three of their last four. Uh, still, I mean, again – People hate this when you put this up there, but if you just said, look, all right, we got three games left. You're now nine and five. You're in first place to AFC South. Everybody would be like, absolutely, we'll take that. Yeah, sign me up all day is what they would be saying. <laughs> but it's how you get there sometimes and not and not where you are, I guess, in terms of you know what the Titans are doing because nine and five looks good until you say, well, three weeks or a month ago they were eight and two. Yeah, you're right. Uh, before we let you go, Thursday night games uh, in this situation, you always think it benefits the home team. San Francisco's got to travel across the country and play. So the Titans should be good to go. If this, if this game was on the road, I'd be worried. But they're at home, and that fits right into kind of the Titans' mantra. They can just kind of ground and pound on Thursday night. But this 49ers team, Terry, I mean, they, they've gone on the road and played really well this year. Yeah, they won at Cincinnati a couple of weeks ago, I believe it was. So they're coming back to – the same general vicinity, the central time zone, to play the, the Titans on Thursday night, a short week. It'll be tough on them, but the, the crazy thing is, I think the 49ers actually opened up as a slight favorite in this ball game. Ooh, ee, yikes. All right, well, Thursday's the game. National TV, the Titans get on there. Oh, I, we were going to talk about the Derrick Henry thing. Some rumblings yesterday about he might make it back. Do you know anything the latest on him? Haven't heard any more. They're not really saying much. And anybody that tells you otherwise, is really speculating. You know, this report that came out from Ian Rappaport last week, you know, saying that Derrick Henry might be back with less. Well, that's what they've been saying all along. You know, right. Everybody's been speculating all along, but there's no timetable on it, you know, for Derrick Henry to return. If he makes it back by the playoffs, that would be about the timetable that's normal in recovering from this injury. And, you know, but now I guess because Ian Rappaport said it, people are treating it like the Apostle Paul said it. So, you know, so it's a, so it's a little bit, you know, so I guess they think it carries a little bit more weight, but it's really the same thing that it's been. They don't know when exactly when Derrick Henry's going to be able to play. They're hopeful they can get him back for the playoffs, but it's not a guarantee. Uh, you're on with George Plaster this afternoon, right? I am. Will you drop Uniform. that Apostle Paul line again? I might do that. <laughs> <laughs> Terry McCormick, Titan Insider. Read it at TitanInsider.com. Terry, thank you. We'll talk to you next week, man. All right. Thanks, Joe. All right. That's uh, Terry McCormick again. Titans are now 9-5. and five, Three games left. The 49ers on Thursday. The Dolphins come after that, and they finish up against the Houston Texans. So if the Titans can win out, they win the AFC South. That guarantees them a first-round playoff game at home in which to the playoffs anything else could happen hey before we go real quick congratulations to coach rick stocks on mtsu the win the bahamas bowl last friday after we got off the show we went and watched the game congrats to them that was the first bowl game of the season so mtsu won the bahamas bowl and well done by them so congratulations to coach stock and his blue raider football team okay we come back we had a great weekend with our santa paul's Adopt-a-thon. We wrap it up in a nice little bow for you. Talk to some of the shelters and such a great time we had. And thank you all for showing up. Hundreds showed up on Saturday at Tremont Mansion in Hermitage for this. We'll show you and talk more about that on the other side. You're watching Mornings on Main Street.